It is commonly believed that tourism became an integral part of human life only with the development of scientific and technological progress. Nowadays, we can simply buy a plane or train ticket, pack a backpack with essential items, and set out to explore the world. However, just a couple of centuries ago, travel was not as easy. The tourism boom is attributed to the 19th century when new horizons and opportunities began to unfold before humanity. It was an era of travel, exploration, and discovery. Almost every aristocratic family of that time could afford to venture into a neighboring country for a few weeks, bringing along a considerable amount of luggage. Wealthy individuals hired special workers to pack all the necessary items for the journey into trunks. They also employed staff to organize and unpack this luggage in a way that prevented damage and, most importantly, kept it from getting wet. It sounds strange to hear about such arrangements now. But everything changed one day. In 1858, in Paris, the first flat suitcase of its kind, named Trianon, was introduced. The person behind this invention was none other than the now famous Louis Vuitton. The first Louis Vuitton workshop was opened in Paris in 1854, destined to become a symbol of the highest quality and luxury. But let's go back to the beginning. The founder of the French fashion house, Louis Vuitton, was born on August 4, 1821, in the small town of Longo Percy in southern France. From childhood, he was destined to endure a difficult path. Every day, the boy helped his father on the farm, working from early morning until late at night. The means for a normal life were lacking, he ate only once a day, and his clothes were patched and re-sewn several times. Sometimes, he even had to sleep right at the workplace. At the age of 10, fate presented him with a not-so-great surprise. His mother died of an unknown illness, and a little later, his father passed away. Life turned out to be far from sweet and fairy tale like At the age of 13, in search of a better life, Vuitton left his paternal home and walked alone to Paris. He had to cover a distance of 470 kilometers from his hometown to Paris, the city where all dreams come true. This little journey took the boy several years. Along the way, he stopped in small towns, found odd jobs, and sustenance. He polished shoes, helped unload goods, worked in the fields, and simply sold flowers. Kind people helped him with accommodation, fed him, and shared their life stories. Only at the age of 16 did Louis Vuitton finally reach Paris. The first couple of weeks in the fashion capital were a real ordeal for the young boy. He wandered the streets in search of work, slept wherever he could. Life was harsh with him until one day, he saw a beautiful box with well-packed items in a shop window. Its shape, color, and curves attracted Louis so much that he dared to enter the shop to see the beauty up close. The workshop was full of visitors. Lewis immediately noticed that the workers were struggling due to the large influx of people. Then, gathering courage, he approached the workshop manager and offered his help. Persistence, determination, and above all, a willingness to work did not leave anyone indifferent. The next day, the young man became a full-fledged worker at Mr. Mirashar's workshop, one of the successful producers of boxes, trunks, and packaging. It's worth noting that in 19th century Europe, box making and luggage packaging were highly respectable and popular crafts. Thanks to his perseverance, within a few years, Louis earned a reputation among the wealthy Parisians as one of the best practitioners in this field. At the age of 33, already an enviable groom with a good income and status, Vuitton married 17-year-old Clemence Emily Perrault. Together, within a year, they opened their own workshop in one of the industrial suburbs of Paris, asnières sur seine In 1854, Louis Vuitton opened his own workshop on Capucine Street near the Place Vaudon. The sign at the main entrance read, We reliably pack the most fragile items. Specializing in packing fashion items. In the early days, a significant portion of his work consisted of individual orders. For example, in 1856, 
One of the workshop's orders was to make trunks for transporting ponies for one of the famous French circuses, Rancy. However, this did not entirely satisfy the man. No, of course, the business was on the rise, and there were enough money and orders. But he was just one of hundreds of similar craftsmen. Lewis was so good at his craft that he decided to do something that could make him famous and renowned. He pondered for a long time, searching for ideas on what else could be invented. After all, at first glance, everything seemed to have been thought of before him. Yet, a brilliant thought came to him, and later this idea became a reality. In 1858, Vuitton introduced to the world his revolutionary waterproof rectangular trunks with rounded lids, using canvas for covering instead of leather. They became so successful that they defined the shape of travel bags for the next 70 years. The Trianon was the world's first suitcase with a flat lid that opened from the side. Previously, suitcases had a convex shape and opened from the top to prevent water from accumulating on the surface during rain. The Trianon, however, was covered with waterproof fabric, and its flat shape made it much more compact, allowing the suitcases to be stacked on top of each other. The success of the new model was also due to the fact that people began to travel actively by train. The convenience of the new accessory attracted the wealthiest audience. It was an unreal success. Orders poured in for Lewis by the hundreds. This miracle suitcase became known far beyond France. However, as often happens, there's a downside to the success story. Already at that time, Louis Vuitton faced a massive problem. His suitcases were being actively counterfeited. Still, he decided that since he was the first to come up with it, his suitcases should stand out from all the others. Therefore, to give his products individuality, a decision was made to develop an original pattern that would stand out against the dull and familiar shades of other suitcases and bags. To distinguish themselves from competitors, brown beige stripes first appeared, followed by the checkerboard pattern, which even now, many years later, is associated only with this brand. From the very beginning, the store's clients were well-off people who understood the importance of quality and beauty. One of them was Napoleon III's wife, Eugenie. Thanks to her, Louis Vuitton's store attracted the attention of many wealthy people in the country, ensuring the success of his future career. From that moment, business rapidly moved upward. In 1867, Louis received a bronze medal at the International Exhibition in Paris for his contribution to society because now the whole world traveled only with Louis's suitcases. But everything was not as fairy tale like and good as it seemed. In 1871, due to the Franco Prussian War, the workshop was destroyed and most of the equipment and tools were simply stolen. It was a challenging time for our hero, who had devoted all his efforts to developing this direction. He quickly took matters into his own hands and, in a short period, managed to restore production. The demand for his products was so high that in 1885, Vuitton opened his first store outside France. The stores in London, in particular, gained special popularity. After opening a boutique on the shores of Foggy Albion in 1885, the inscription El Vitten Depot appeared on each item, guaranteeing the 100% authenticity of the product. Lewis was prudent even then, it was difficult to counterfeit it at the time. From 1857 to 1936, the fashion house was run by Louis and his son George. In 1886, they jointly patented a spring lock, the design of which is still used today. All lock models were stored in the workshops in case the owner needed another key. All the time, up until his death, Louis dedicated himself to his beloved work. He invented and developed convenient handles for carrying trunks, locks, tried to change the corner inserts on suitcases, giving them a more elegant design. He had about a hundred inventions and innovations to his credit, many of which we use today, without even realizing that they were devised a hundred years ago by the son of a poor farmer. The great master passed away at the age of 70, rightfully earning the title. Following his death, the reins of the business passed into the hands of his son, Georges Vuitton. 
It was under him that the legendary monogram with flowers, diamonds, and the letters LV emerged as a tribute to his father. The first trunk with this distinctive design appeared way back in 1897 and is still in use today. The son of the legendary founders set a global goal for himself. He was determined to elevate the brand to an international level. And he succeeded. Thanks to Georges, new stores opened in New York, Buenos Aires, and he inaugurated the largest and most famous store in Paris, located on the champs elysees In 1901, the steamer trunk was released, serving as a prototype for modern backpacks. In 1925, at the request of Coco Chanel, the squareback bag was created. However, the most sought-after women's handbags, the Kipper model, appeared in 1930, initially conceived as bags for carrying dirty laundry. This model remains one of the most popular even today. George Vuitton was succeeded by his son Gaston Louis Vuitton, the grandson of Louis Vuitton. He, in turn, transformed the brand and made adjustments to its design. Under him, the legendary print became finer and could be applied to all products. During World War II, the Louis Vuitton brand had connections with the fascists. The company prefers not to remember this historical period, but some facts from that time are still available. It is known that a sign with a fascist-oriented message hung at the entrance of the flagship boutique in Paris, entry for Jews, is forbidden. Despite these events, decades later, the brand still remained a symbol of status, good taste, and impeccable quality. Lewis's descendants continued to demonstrate entrepreneurship by opening brand boutiques worldwide. The 1970s marked a period of relaunch and rapid development for Louis Vuitton. The company grew from two exclusive stores and 11 million euros in sales revenue in the early 1970s to 125 stores generating 600 million euros by 1999. In 1987, Louis Vuitton merged with another luxury and major brand, Mote Hennessy, forming a conglomerate called LVMH. Today, it owns more than 70 brands, including Christian Dior, Hennessy, Givenchy, Kenzo, and more. Louis Vuitton's bags and luggage remain popular among global stars and well-known personalities such as Princess Diana, Audrey Hepburn, Angelina Jolie, and Kim Kardashian. Remarkably, the manufacturing technology of the luggage has not changed since the time of the first workshop. The trunk's body is still made of poplar wood, and the corner protection elements and reliable locks have been preserved. It is also worth noting that the company offers a lifetime warranty on all products, and in case of wear, scratches, or accidental damage, they can be restored at specialized repair services. In essence, when you buy a Louis Vuitton suitcase, you are purchasing it for a lifetime. In 1989, Control of the company was taken over by one of its major shareholders, the French billionaire Bernard Arnault. In 1997, the brand's creative director became Marc Jacobs. Thanks to him, the company reached new heights. Under his leadership, the brand released collections of men's and women's clothing and footwear, exclusive accessories, and jewelry. Each new fashion show was a spectacle, with models riding carousels, exiting elevators, and descending escalators. Mark worked for the company for a total of 16 years. In November 2013, a young visionary named Nicolas Gasquier took the helm of the entire women's clothing line at Louis Vuitton. Having previously worked with Jean-Paul Gaultier, he elevated the brand to new heights. The first collection he released at Louis Vuitton was hailed as a triumph by the press. His first perspective on the brand's aesthetics and inspiration from the 60s and 70s radically changed the company's concept. As of today, this luxury fashion house has its flagship stores in 53 countries worldwide. According to the company's tradition, all unsold bags are returned to Paris, where they are burned. This is done to avoid counterfeiting and to remain the only brand in the world responsible for its quality and originality. 
In 2016, many Louis Vuitton boutiques introduced a collection of fragrances for women, curated by Jacques Cavalier, and in 2018, a men's fragrance was released. Starting from the summer of 2019, the company began producing unisex perfumes, capturing the hearts of all brand enthusiasts. Louis Vuitton bags are considered the most expensive in the world, with prices ranging from $5,000 to $55,000. There are even Louis Vuitton contraceptives, each priced at $65. Bags, clothing, and accessories that Louis Vuitton never sells wholesale or at a discount represent a perfect blend of classic and modernity. Louis Vuitton was the first brand to use celebrities, singers, and actors as models in advertising. Mikhail Gorbachev even made an appearance in one of their ads. The net worth of Louis Vuitton's owner, Bernard Arnault, was estimated at $102 billion in 2017, placing him in the top 10 of the world's richest people. One notable scandal that led to a legal case involved Britney Spears, Sony BMG, and MTV Online. The singer was found guilty of violating the law on trademark forgery in the video for Do Something, which featured a control board covered in pink material with Louis Vuitton branding. Sony BMG and MTV Online had to pay the brand $80,000 each for broadcasting the video. In 2014, a special custom order was crafted for prima ballerina Diana Vishneva of the Mariinsky Theater. The trunk accommodated six packs and 18 pairs of point shoes, along with the ballerina's accessories. In 2019, the brand's skilled craftsmen created a trunk to transport the FIFA World Cup trophy, a 6-kilogram gold trophy adorned with malachite, traveling the world in a secure box with the brand's logo. It's worth noting that the French fashion house can be easily recognized not only by its unique print and monogram, but also thanks to the amazing quality of its products. Boutiques open in many countries bring the brand significant annual profits, establishing it as one of the best and most successful worldwide. And by the way, travel bags and suitcases continue to enjoy enormous success and are sold out instantly. The motto, every suitcase must combine high mobility and lightness remains relevant to this day. Friends, have you ever owned items from this brand? Be sure to share in the comments. Well, that's all for today. Evaluate the video. Bye.